CPF grants. Hello everyone, welcome to Spotlight Series Episode 6, Private Condo versus Executive Condo. What are the main differences? I'm Edmund here, co-founder of PropertyNet.sg, a website focused on unbiased property blogs, property reviews, and has been featured by Money Talk Channel 8, Property Guru, and The New Paper. I'm also a real estate leader managing a team handling real estate transactions. The information contained in this presentation is for general information purposes only. What's an executive condominium, EC in short? The EC scheme was launched by HDB in 1995 with the aim of providing private housing at affordable prices. ECs are designed, constructed and sold by private developers and comes with a full suite of condominium facilities and are physically indistinguishable from private condominiums in design and physical outlook. It is mainly to cater to the sandwich class whereby Singapore citizens are wanting to upgrade from HDBs to private condo. They find that this upgrade might be too huge and amount for them. They will use ECs as a stepping stone as they progress up the asset progression ladder. What are the main differences between executive condo and private condo? For ECs, the eligibility, at least one must be Singapore citizen and the other either a Singapore citizen or a Singapore permanent resident to form the family nucleus. The EC buyers are also entitled to CPF housing grants. Okay, for first timers, they will have these housing grants. Okay, based on the table, you look at your income bracket, you will see the grants amount. Why people choose the EC route? Okay, most of the time, when you are the upgrader, you will find that if I want to upgrade to a private condo, okay, upfront, I will need to pay a 12% ABSD first, which is the additional buyer duty, additional buyer stamp duty first. Many HDB upgraders will find that, wow, I got to pay this upfront first, which is a bit too much. Okay, Let's say for 1 million property, you, you will need 120,000 upfront. Not many can afford to, to come up with this amount upfront. If they, if they don't have this, this amount and they want to upgrade to a private condo, they will need to sell the HDB first, rent somewhere, and then they buy. So this one is a bit of a hassle for families with kids. It will be a bit of a hassle for them to upgrade. The, easy, the easier option, I would say, is HDB to ECs. Because for HDB to EC, there's no ABSD payment upfront. They can actually stay there when the EC is already TOP, okay, which is ready for move in. They can sell off the HDB then. There's a time um, for them for them to transit. It is uh, more hassle-free for HDB upgraders. And one thing to note, okay, for loan to value, okay, as this is considered first property loan for HDB upgraders, instead of if you're upgrading from HDB to private condo, we are not affected by the second property loan. Okay. MAS, uh, for, for banks, uh, MAS will still treat EC buyers as a first property loan. They can still have loan to value of 75%, meaning they need to just put in 25% down payment. This is one of the easier access, easier access for HDB upgraders. One downside, HDB to EC, okay. for ECs, the loan, uh, the loan, Maximum loan available will be 30%. The maximum loan available will be 30% of the household income. They will use this to calculate, okay, which is the mortgage servicing ratio, to calculate the loan maximum loan amount that they are eligible. But if you're going for a private condo, okay, you can have 60%, which is the total debt servicing ratio okay, for the loan eligibility, the maximum loan eligibility. For ECs, of course, after 10 years, they will be privatized. The owners can just sell them freely in the open market even to foreigners. Okay, and, and that's it. Price gap between condos and ECs. For ECs, usually the entry price is 20% lower than nearby private condo launches. Okay, typically, it's all, 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 all typically it's slightly cheaper because the land that they that the government sells it at a subsidized rate. When developers um, sell it, it is at a subsidized rate. When we see, when we compare during launch, we compare to neighboring projects, the price gap is usually 20% upon MOP, which is five years after they stay, when they want to sell in the resale market, you can see that the price gap close up, okay, meaning the price of ECs is chasing the private condo. So it's getting closer and closer to the private condo pricing. 
and when it privatized after 10 years, the gap is only 5%. Meaning to say the EC's owners make a bigger profit than private condo. That's it. Is it worth getting? Let's look at the EC gains for the past few launches, for the past few projects from Esperina, the Canopy, Prev, Osville, and off. Okay, you will see that the the for the Esperina, they gain about 45%. Okay, the lowest gain here is 26%, 23%. Okay, over here, 23%, lowest gain. But it's still a very good profit. Will future EC still looking at the land land bits, looking at the land prices, okay, it, it just go higher and higher. Will the, will the the future EC buyers still 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 being still able to profit from this EC purchase or not? We'll be wondering. But when we look at it, the price gap between ECs and private condo are still very wide. Okay, it is still very wide. If you look at it, private condo per square foot per power ratio now on average is about 800, 900,000. See this gap, as long as this gap is still as wide, EC buyers in the future will still make their profits. Okay, in summary, the main differences for ECs, eligibility, Singapore citizen, loan tightened um, by MSR, there, there is CPF grants, holding period approximately nine years, okay, TOP to MOP for private it is the holding period is TDS holding period is three years seller stamp duty, correct? Then the loan is governed by total debt servicing ratio, which is uh, in conclusion, only Singaporean can qualify to purchase a brand new EC, and it will take around nine years, as compared to three years for private condo to materialize the profits. Even though it is a Singaporean privilege, do weigh your opportunity costs and asset progression options. Okay. Because if you think that your career path, you can progress faster in your career path, whereby you, are, you can earn much more, you can earn faster in a very short time, you might consider going straight to a private condo, which gives you, give you more flexibility if you want to upgrade in the near future. Whereby if three years down the road, you find that, hey, I'm earning more, I want to upgrade from a two-bedroom private to a three-bedroom private or four-bedroom private, you can do it. Okay? You won't be locked down by this a uh, period of nine years if you get an EC. Do weigh your options and then and then you will do your own judgment call. Okay? I, but I will say if you are the sandwich class and you find that that location of that EC suits you, okay, most probably you will be staying there for more than 10 years. That's it. Every option here depends on individual. There's no one size fits all. If you need anyone to speak to, do contact any one of us in propertynet.sg. Okay, all of us here are actually trained in terms of financial planning and your options planning. We can actually give you a very nice breakdown. I hope to see you all soon. And do scan and read our blogs. We, we are updating blogs, news and uh, articles, facts and figures when we, when we break down even the future um, launches and um, condo reviews. Okay, we will always post it on our blogs. And also do subscribe to our YouTube channel whereby you can see the repeat of this video and our past videos, past episodes. And do also um, like and follow us on Facebook whereby as and when we have news, okay, new articles and new videos, we will also cross-share and post on our Facebook. I hope to see you soon. Take care and stay safe.